Between the Lines. And welcome back. I'm Rohit Vyas again reporting from Atlanta, Georgia. Again joining me, Dr. NSANS, a renowned cardiologist who's done pioneering research, and uh, Surinder Reddy Niravitla, who's a cardiac surgeon uh, from Springfield, Ohio. Okay, now Dr. Niravitla, you've been talking about salt. Every time I've come to these conventions, we've discussed it, and you've been mentioning the fact that it's actually a poison yes, uh, for us is. humans. I want you to tell us what led you to this conclusion. How did it all begin? How did you so, get into this uh, whole... Uh, first of all, thank you, Rohit, for having me on the show. Mm -hmm. And also let me say that I'm very honored to be in the presence of Dr. Enos, who has done the, the most pioneering research on this subject of heart disease among Indians. Uh, he might not have mentioned it. I, I don't know if you missed it. But his original study, the, called the CADI study, was done on physicians and their spouses. And he also pointed out in that study that uh, Indians back in 1981, this was presented, I have four times higher risk of Caucasians, whether you're vegetarian or non-vegetarian. The risk did not change. I just want to take something from his study. Extremely important. But yeah. yes, mm -hmm. so I stumbled mm -hmm. on this subject from a different angle, um, simply because I found a number of my colleagues and family members having heart disease without being smokers and without having a bad cholesterol profile. So I stumbled on this problem of high blood pressure and excessive consumption of salt among South Asians and Indians too, and, and Americans too. So I dug more and more into it, and I stumbled on the fact that table salt is actually a bigger problem than tobacco. Even from coronary artery disease has become a bigger pro health problem worldwide uh, compared to cancer as well. So adding two, two and two together, now we have high blood pressure, world's number one health problem. There are 1.2 billion people with high blood pressure. About, the, about, um, about 300 million Indians with high blood pressure. It's a very tough subject, but there's no other reason for most people to have high blood pressure except for eating table salt. So how much salt you get away with depends on how salt sensitive you are. So that took me into the black American population who are the most salt sensitive segment of the uh, entire universe. So high blood pressure is a malignant disease in black America. When you say malignant, it is, when it, it is like a cancer. It affects very early and difficult to control, more complications. Caucasians, about 20%, 25% salt sensitive. Indians, we don't have the numbers, but my guess is about that. So high blood pressure contributing to coronary artery disease is underestimated, under-recognized, and under-treated. And that's our subject, because it's a very tough subject, and um, I've been trying to hone in on raising awareness of the dangers of table salt. Yeah, but don't, don't uh, people, uh, isn't it a common knowledge for most of us at least that um, salt is a necessary uh, sort of nutrient? No, it's a misconception <laughs> if I may. Yes, uh, sodium is important component in the human body, just like potassium, magnesium, calcium, iron, many other things. So we need to detach the concept that sodium is equal to table salt. No, human body needs sodium. That needs to come from things that we need to eat. Table salt should not be the source of our, our sodium. It's basically an additive. Is what right. It so to. table salt, we need to <clears throat> cut off the link. We need to, uh, table salt, no. Pepper? We need how sodium, about, how yes. about pepper? When they pepper is fine. We don't have any data to say pepper is bad for us. Okay. So just like we should <clears throat> get uh, calcium, magnesium, potassium, all the other things from things that we are supposed to eat, and we have to get sodium also from things we are supposed to eat, not from table salt. Dr. Ennis, um, the LPL thing you mentioned now, is there a solution? I mean, are people... First of all, are we supposed to visit our cardiologists um, annually, every six months, because of this predisposition to what you're talking about? Uh, no, I have a totally different approach to that. Uh, lipoprotein little a. I want to share one more. When I found 25% of Indians are uh, lipoprotein little a, which now is confirmed by the, the NHLBI, we wanted to know if you have 100 heart attack among Indians, what is the contribution of LPL to heart attack? This was a multi-million study uh, done in collaboration with Salim Yusuf. To make it short, 10% of the heart attack among Indians is attributed to lipoprotein little a, but only 12% to diabetes. So this is neck and neck. And if we factor in one in four Indians have high LPL till day. That figure will be two or three times higher than diabetes. So also, uh, my uh, friends, 
told you about the high blood pressure becoming more malignant, more dangerous in hyper poor blacks. Same phenomenon has now been documented. Lipoprotein not only is more common, one in f uh, four Indians have it. It is doubly dangerous in Indians. Indians have the second highest LPA level and the highest risk from uh, LPA level. Dr. Nervetla, <clears throat> the salt content, is there a way that we can tell from our blood tests and all the rest of it for the benefit of those who are watching us and don't understand the no, process? No, there is no blood test that is available right now to see how salt sensitive you are actually. That's the problem. So if you're smart, you assume that you might be salt sensitive and don't wait till you get other hundreds of problems, stable salt causes. And right from the beginning, get used to eating less salt. And second concept we need to get away from is that the food doesn't taste good without salt. You just need to try. And there are many other substitutes you try, like ginger, garlic, uh, cilantro, uh, curry leaves, um, raw mango, tamarind, etc., etc. You These are acids. We give similar taste to salt. If you mix them in the, eat them in the right mixture, you don't miss salt. Then you don't have to worry about table salt, actually. So if you do that, then your high blood pressure comes down. And the World Health Organization says high blood pressure contributes to 50% of heart attacks and 50% of strokes. And you don't have to be in that number. Uh, and I want to uh, tell our viewers, actually, when Dr. Nerevetla first mentioned this to me, I mentioned to him that I had heard something about his work. And I don't eat salt myself. I don't take salt at all. I don't have any salt. And actually, you, to concur with what you're saying, I don't taste the difference. It's good because I'm used to being without yes. salt. In fact, if you add salt, I go to restaurants, I tell them, please give me without salt. They add it, I find it's uh, too bitter. Absolutely. I can't, I can't Once have you get it, so. used to but no salt <coughs> diet, you will don't want it anyway. Yeah. The food tastes good. Can I make a comment on this? Mm -hmm. Did you eat the lunch today? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. How salty was it? You had three times more salt right. than needed. Okay, yes. so it was, and the Indian conception of the salt is much, much higher, and you don't need much, but we put in three, four times the salt. So I must congratulate you for championing this cause. You, sir, Let's take another quick break. We'll come back with both of you again to talk about any treatment options and what we should do to prevent all of this. Our guest once again, Dr. Ennis Ennis, a renowned cardiologist from Chicago who has done pioneering research on our predisposition to heart ailments, and also Surinder, Dr. Surinder Reddy Neravetla, a cardiac surgeon from Springfield, Ohio, who has also done pioneering research on the dangers of salt. We'll be right back after this short break. Between the Lines.